Hello everyone, today I'll be guiding you on how to ship ants. And when you first start, you want to choose between a USPS priority box or a normal brown box. The USPS priority boxes will generally be more expensive because they're on a set price and this one is about $10.15 while the normal brown boxes are just based off of weight and are usually cheaper. However, if you choose to do a printed label, which we'll talk about more later, it will generally be cheaper either way. Now first, we will do this. Shipping is actually pretty easy, but it's always nice to have a visual guide. I'll be using this USPS tape that was free, because it was free, but you also can just use any other type of tape. So first we go like this. You want to like tape the corners as it will help it stay intact and it won't combust while it's in the shipping because that's not fun. There you go. Two more corners. This is honestly probably like the easiest part. Just make sure your tape is actually like on there firmly. There you go. Now you have your box. Next, you have to prepare your ants. And for this demonstration, I'll be using a Campanatus sansabinus colony. That's not the best quality there. You can sort of see it now. It looks pretty nice, right? And yes, I'll be changing the water soon. There's still water in there. All right. To do that, I'll just be grabbing some of this. You put your ant in, or ant colony. Actually, let's go like this. Honestly, shipping is pretty easy on itself. You just have to pack well. And as you see, I have my tube. It's actually pretty nice now. We'll be grabbing a little more. There you go, now you have like a nice, very protected ant colony. You put it in here. I'm not gonna tape it up because I actually need this. As you can see, it's pretty loose around it. So what we'll do is put some paper towel. I need a little more, so I'll be right back. Apparently it would be a little neater because it would be taped up and it wouldn't be all exposed like this. Go like this. And what the paper towel is for, it just helps it so it doesn't move back and forth. As you can see, a wonderful tracking job. Just ignore the this thing sticking out right there. Then you would close the box. Oh actually first let's do this. As you can see I do a little shake test to make sure it doesn't move around. See it's all fine. You would then seal it. And then you would pull this thing off and then press it down and then it would be sealed. After that, I generally put tape along here to help it stay closed just in case. And then turn it around and now you see this address portion. All right, so you put, you put an address for from and to. This from would always be from you. And here's an example. You have right here a name this is just a general name, not an actual name. So like, you put in full first name, last name. You can generally do a fake name too, but I wouldn't do that. There you. In address, you have the number, you have the sh and then I have the street name. You can generally put other things here like street, road, that type of stuff. And then you have the city or town or whatever, and you have the state, and then you have the zip code. This is random zip code, so. It probably exists, but don't look it up. And this would also work for the two. You need the exact same thing, but just like, obviously not your own address for two. You don't want to send something to yourself. And now, when it comes to shipping, you have two options. You can do a shipping, a prepaid shipping label. You just print it from online. Or you can just write the information on the box, like how I just showed. And then 
bring it to the store or the, the post office to get it set up. If you do a prepaid label, it's generally a lot faster. You just answer some stuff online, you put, and then you put the shipping label on the box, and then you can just bring it in and leave it on the counter. Or you can also just bring it to the counter and ask for a receipt, and they'll do that too. But I'm gonna show you, or I'm gonna tell you about questions that they'll ask you once you're at the USPS if you decide to just write the information on the box rather than a prepaid label. This first question here will basically ask you to confirm that you're not knowingly packing something and shipping something that could to harm someone. And yeah, you obviously press no. It's a, it'll be on a little kiosk thing on the side. The second question will ask you if you're knowingly shipping anything fragile, liquids, liquidous, fragile, or hazardous. And I've honestly done both. If you put yes, they'll just ask you what it is and then just say it's like glass or something because it's in a glass test tube. But it's generally just you don't have to like specifically state what it is. And then if you press no, I find that in my post office, they'll just ask me the question anyways. But I've heard that it varies depending on post office. Some will say ask you what it is, some not. But you can just be really vague about it. And in which case I say you can just see something like glass, plastic, depending on like if it's a plastic tube or a glass tube. And then yeah. And then you would give them the box, or they would take the box, and they would ask you if you want any additional insurance, and you would say no. It already comes with $50 insurance if you're using priority. And then they'd give you a receipt, and that's it. Yeah, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, leave it down below. Yeah.